Brisbane has just emerged from a three-day lock, three lockdown. Was it effective, do you think? Well, it seems to have made, but it made to be a massive overreaction, uh, Danica. Uh, 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 the, the, I realise there were concerns uh, over the uh, new strain, the mutant strain, so to speak, from the UK. Uh, but uh, what we're told is that, uh, that that was out and about from January the 2nd this year. The lockdown wasn't put in place till 6 p.m. on uh, January the 8th, uh, uh, and then of course, and of course, on Friday you saw the scenes of people mass running to Woolies to stock up over the weekend and not really respecting socially distancing. Uh, yet there's been not a single case uh, in the whole of the Brisbane area. So I think some questions have to be asked whether this was the right strategy. Now, as I say, I understand that uh, there were these concerns about this more virulent, vir virulent strain. Uh, but uh, we also need to learn the lessons for the future. And I'm not sure if another case like this uh, steps up, whether we should shut down a whole city of a few million people uh, for a few days when their cost for small businesses and people on low incomes, it's just enormous. It's a massive, massive cost. So we've got to be very wary of that. And what does it say about contact tracing in that state? We look at New South Wales' approach to outbreaks in that state. They haven't shut down. They've kept the economy going. Uh, Greater Brisbane shuts down for three days. Are you worried that there's issues with contact tracing? Look, I'm not so sure about that. I, I mean, <clears throat> the, the, uh, it just seems to be that the Queensland government is scared of their own shadow and not willing to trust their health authorities. I, 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 the experiences I've had with the contract tracing team at Queensland Health have been uh, incredibly impressive. Uh, we had an outbreak uh, up here in Rockhampton uh, very early on. Uh, they tested hundreds of people very, very quickly, uh, tracked down people very, very fast. Uh, and I think uh, from reports, I think the same thing seemed to happen here in Brisbane from this, this hotel cleaner. Uh, so I don't think it's the health authorities that are doing the wrong thing here. I think it would be, be great, though, if the Queensland government could back its own health, health, health officials, could back its health workers, because I think they are doing a great job. Uh, if if we, we can trust that a bit more, we perhaps don't need to... To, to jump at shadows in the way we've done over the past week in Queensland at a great cost, as I said, to, to especially small businesses in the Brisbane region. It's reignited border wars again. The West Australian Premier, uh, he's saying that the New South Wales approach was out of step and that an elimination approach to crush the virus is better. Should all states and territories be pursuing an elimination strategy? It's just completely impractical. I mean, OK, if we wanted to adopt an elimination strategy, that would mean we'd have to shut off the whole of Australia because in recent times, the cases we have uh, uh, seen in Australia have come from the, the quarantine system. And why do we have a quarantine system? Well, we're letting Australians come back home. We're letting Australians uh, who are stranded overseas come back to their own country and they have to do 14 days quarantine. But, of course, that creates a risk. Uh, when this process occurs, and we've seen uh, outbreaks uh, from that risk. So the only practical way to pursue what Mark McGowan wants is to completely close our borders and say to all those Australians overseas, yeah, you've got an Australian passport, you've got a kangaroo and emu on that little book, uh, but we're not letting you in. And I, I, I could not fathom that at all. I, I think, I don't know if Mark would actually subscribe to that view. And you've got the Labor Party out there saying, we're not, we're not getting enough Australians back into the country. In the meantime, one of the senior Labor Party leaders out there saying, well, we need an elimination strategy, the practical, implicit co uh, consequence of which would be we would not allow any Australians back to our own, their own country. Yeah, there's no doubt, doubt that the states are certainly at odds uh, over how to handle this pandemic right now, Matt Canavan. Uh, just on another matter, do you think that social media platforms made the right decision when they decided to suspend Donald Trump from their platforms? No, no, I don't. Uh, I, I think uh, this has been a massive misstep uh, from Twitter, Facebook, uh, lots of other social media platforms. Um, there will be a reaction to this, uh, I'm sure, in the US, uh, which won't be great for, the, for, I think, those social media companies. Uh, Twitter stocks are way down today, I, I see. Uh, but I also I think it's important for us to think of the ramifications for our own country. Do we want uh, a US corporation having that kind of power over our own uh, politics? Uh, uh, there's been reports over the weekend that uh, 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 Twitter and Facebook have been deleting accounts uh, in, in Uganda in their elections. And I'm not saying Uganda, maybe there's some justification for that. Mm. But the question here is, 
do we think an American corporation should be able to influence Australian politics? And I think that's a question that a lot of people uh, are asking themselves around the world right now, that these US corporations have far too much power over d democracies and outside their own country, and there does need to be a deep consideration of whether we need better laws in this country to protect our political system and communication so that we don't have interference from other countries, including corporations based in the US. Matt Canavan, that's all we have time for. Thank you for joining me. No worries. Have a great day.